Hey guys, Chili here. Welcome back to C++ Game Engine Infrastructure. Got a short one for you today. I just want to lay down the philosophy, the policy on uh, the organization of our source files and our namespaces. So first things first, rule number one, we want to, uh, we want to split up our code into header and CPP files. You know, I've been guilty in the in the past of putting everything in the header because it's easier. It's all in one place, it's your one-stop shop. Uh, but I do have a cool thing here. Uh, I bound the shortcut for switching between source and header to control W. So I can switch between that. Oh man, I'm fast as heck, brah. Uh, so anyways, yeah. Uh, split those up and put as much code as possible in the CPP. You know, we're not always going to be able to do that uh, because, you know, templates are a thing and they don't let you put stuff in the CPP file. But there you go. That's thing number one. Now, the other second rule is as much as possible, we want to have one class per, you know, header source pair. So, you know, you, if you have a class, uh, your IOC container, then you're going to have like container.h and container.cpp, and it's only going to have that one class in it. Uh, now, I might break that rule in a small way or even in a big way sometimes, but generally we want to stick to the baseline of one class per source pair. You know, if you do that, it's easier to find stuff because you don't have like a bunch of classes in a single source file. You got to scroll through to find which one you're actually looking for. And if you have one class per source, uh, it makes it easier if you just want to pull one class into a different project. You just got to move the file. You don't have to delete anything or anything like that. It's all nice and modular. Rule three. Uh, I think I already mentioned this one actually, but the uh, the name of the class or the struct or whatever should match the name of the source file. It just makes things easier to find. If you're looking through in the file system and you're looking for a specific class, you know the name of the file that contains that class because it's the same name, right? And obviously this, you know, this stuff, one class per source pair file name matches. That doesn't really apply when you just got free functions. You know, you know, you probably group a bunch of them together in a single source file usually. Um, but most of the code is going to be contained within classes. And so for the most part, these rules are going to apply. Now, the next policy is one that I haven't really done before in the videos, but I should be doing. Uh, so we should really put all of our code into a namespace. Wrap it all in a single namespace so we can ensure that it's not going to collide with any other, you know, class names, function names from, a, from third parties that we bring in or whatever. We'll put it all in a namespace and that's going to cover our butt a little bit and just keep things organized. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to put everything into the namespace called chill. And there's really no downspace to this because since everything is in the same namespace, whenever I access, you know, whenever I'm accessing derived or whatever, it's all in the same namespace. I don't have to prefix it with chill derived. So very little downside. You just got to nap, you know, wrap all of your files in this one namespace thing and you're good to go. Now, as for how things are going to be laid out, uh, well, let's let's go back to namespace for a second. These things are all kind of tied together, but uh, so the whole project will be in the chill namespace. But I also want to have a little more separation of things into namespaces. So, for example, um, we are going to be adding the IOC container code into uh, our our project here in this video, and we're going to put it all in the namespace IOC, which will be inside of the chill namespace. Uh, so I want to, you know, put different subsystems, different, you know, infrastructure systems into their own namespace. Now you can go really crazy and I've gone a little crazy in the past, just experimenting with how much I want to structure things with namespaces. So let me give you an example. So names have been changed to protect the innocent, but basically I had my base, you know, uh, project namespace and then I had a sub namespace and I put all, I 
said, I want a place, namespace for all my infrastructure things. And in there I had my logging infrastructure utility and I had my service, which is like IOC. And then I had a namespace for just general utilities. And then in that namespace, I had a sub namespace for things related to error codes. And you can see the namespaces, they're getting pretty freaking long. Like if I want to reference, you know, from some code in this namespace and I want to reference error, I got to go infra util error name of thing. It's getting a little wild. So I don't want to go too deep. I'm thinking only, you know, two layers usually. One layer is the root to chill, which everything is in and we don't really have to worry about. And then one namespace for every, you know, system basically. So I'll have one namespace for IOC, I'll have another one for logging, but I'm not going to group them all together in a, an infrastructure namespace or anything like that. And I'm not going to try to sub namespace IOC or whatever too much. Sometimes I will break that rule, but generally I want to keep it mostly just two layers, the base layer chill and then one sub namespace just for organization. Similarly, I want to keep the, uh, the namespace names relatively short. So instead of it being like, you know, inversion of control, I'll just call it IOC because I will be using those prefixes in the code. And if they're too long, they're just gonna, it's gonna be annoying. And the last thing I want to mention here is I want to keep the, uh, the file structure. I want it to match the structure of the namespace. So if there's an infra namespace, there will be an infra folder. And in that folder, there will be a log folder. And in there will be all the source files that belong in the log namespace. Keeping those together, again, it makes it easier to find things. It's all logical. They all match up between the file system and the namespace structure. And uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a good way to go. I'll put everything, all the source code, I won't put it in a chill directory. I'll put it in SRC. So in the root of the core project, there will be an SRC folder. And inside of there, there's gonna be folders for each of the namespaces. So uh, you'll see it as we make it. I'm going to bring in now some code. I'm going to banish this test code here and I am going to bring in some code that I've coded up and it's basically just the stuff that I shown in the IOC videos. All right, I have returned. You can see the, uh, the test code has been removed. We now have a folder in the core project source. This is where all our source files will live and it'll separate them from, you know, the build outputs and all the other garbage. And in there we have the folder IOC and this has the source code for our IOC container and the singleton service system. All right, and this, this, this stuff is similar to what I've shown in those videos, but it's a little different because I've actually separated out the singleton uh, container from the IOC factory container. And so the interface is a little different. I'll get into that. We'll explore that more in the next video. I'm gonna, we'll have an interesting way of exploring the interface to our IOC system. But let's just get this compiling again today. So yeah, we removed core.h because that was the test code. I've copied the contents of it a little bit into here. So how would we include, let's say, uh, container.h? Let's say we're just gonna do a little test with container. Well, core, then we gotta go source to get all the source files. And then there's one folder, IOC, and then we have container.h. And so we've included that header. Now we can use the container. And so I'll do IOC. Oh, first of all, uh, so everything inside of core, you can see here, I've put it inside the chill namespace and then inside IOC. Uh, this exe that we're building uh, uses the chill engine code, but let's say that logically it's outside. So it has, to, it's not in the same namespace. So we should do using Chill, I'm using namespace chill, I guess is what it is. Namespace chill. Uh, and that will give us access to the things in chill. Now let us go IOC. And now we get all the things that are in IOC. We get this nice filtered list, not so much garbage like you would uh, just in the global namespace. And um, we'll do get our IOC container pointer, no, I guess dot, and then we want to register. So we want to register an implementation of the base interface 
and this is going to return. I think I made it make shared, although this point is certainly open for debate, but this is going to return a derived. And now let's test it by resolving it out. So we'll do IOC get dot resolve some implementation of base. And we will call test for that. And we should get out 69. Run it, see if it compiles or if I missed something. And there you go, 69. So it's all working. And there you have it. This is basically the policy that we are going to maintain for how we organize our source files in you know both the file system and in the namespace. In the next video, we're going to explore the interface into this IOC system. Uh, we're going to do it using uh, test automation. So I'm going to going to set up a little bit of test automation in this solution, and uh, we'll use that to write some tests for IOC, which will also allow us to explore the API in an interesting fashion. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more C++ game engine infrastructure.